Have you ever wondered how a master craftsman designs and builds their projects? How about how to customise a camper van for truly unique family getaways? Make sure you stick with Evolution Power Tools TV for all the insight and inspiration you'll need. You're right everyone, my name's Joel from Average Joel's Joinery and I'm excited to introduce to you the very first episode of Evolution Power Tools TV, a monthly show dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories, DIY guides and tips and tricks to make you a better maker. We're going to be posting a brand new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV every month so make sure you get subscribed to the channel and turn that bell notification on to guarantee you never miss any new content. Okay, let's take a look at what's coming up in this episode. First up, Will from WH Creations is going to give us a tour of his workshop and show us his incredible handiwork. We also have a link to Will's fantastic guide to building a coffee table, so make sure you check that out as well. Next, we spend a day in the life of Adam from Camper Vans on the Frith, and he tells us about how he got started customising vans. We also have a link to a great video of Adam showing us how he works on his projects, so be sure to click through and give that a watch. Later on, we'll be joined in the studio by Vicky, also known as The Carpenter's Daughter, and she'll take us on a journey through her creations, her YouTube channel, and her motives and methods. We also have a link to our full interview with Vicky, so check that out when you get the chance. After that, we'll be getting more technical with Evolution Power Tools' very own Lee Price, who'll show us how to correctly set up and use a track saw. As a senior designer for Evolution Power Tools, Lee really knows his stuff, so make sure you keep watching. We also have a link to the full track saw guide. Finally, it's competition time. Megan will take a look at your recent creations and announce whose project has won some great prizes. And we'll also be launching our big prize competition. Okay, now you've seen what's coming up in the show, let's get started. Here's Will from WH Creations and his incredible builds. Hey, I'm Will and I run the YouTube channel WH Creations. So if you ever watch one of my videos, you'll know that I'm pretty much do anything and everything. I work with wood, metal, resin, anything at all. So at the moment, I'm working a lot with oak barrels. Now I love these things, they're absolutely universal. You, get, you can make them into planters, you can make them into furniture. I've even made a couple of benches, like outdoor benches, and they're perfect if uh, you're into your gardening or even to sit at the bottom of your bed to replace like an ottoman or anything like that. And my latest woodworking project is this, my new wood store. Now I built it because I wanted to get all the wood out of my workshop because space is a premium. So it's out of there, into here. And the clever thing about this wood store is, oh, the roof lifts up. I currently have to prop it up with a piece of wood, but hopefully that will change over the next couple of months. And if I open up the doors, oh, you'll see that I'm currently housing all of my oak barrel safes currently about three or four barrels in there at the moment and because it's a little bit wet in the UK at the moment so in there it's nice and dry and hopefully they'll dry out enough that I can start using them for furniture projects. So while this wood store did have its challenges the most challenging build to date has to be the workshop itself. Come in I'll show you. So when we moved into this house, we had a small concrete prefab shed. It was small, it was damp, it was horrible, and it had to go. So in its place, I designed this. The walls are all made of four by twos, and that in itself had its struggles. I mean, this whole wall was one piece. It was so heavy. And because I was on my own, I had to work out some way to lift it. So what I did was use a long four by two, which was a spare piece that I had laying around, screwed it onto the top piece and then levered it up into place using that 4x2 as a, a foot until I screwed it all the way down into the foundations. Now the downside of having a workshop this size is dust. Now I'm not the only one, everyone in the country has to suffer with dust and thankfully over the last couple of months I've actually installed this dust collection system. I've got hoses all around the workshop and each of the bigger tools has their own dedicated dust hose. 
So CNC's have got readily available in the UK and I think it's a must for any woodworker. I absolutely love it. I mean, I wish I had a bigger one, but my space doesn't allow me to at the moment. So this is my CNC. It's approximately 40 by 30 and I've got a dedicated PC tower and I built this box around it just to keep all the dust and the dirt and anything that's in the air out of the PC. And the pride and joy in my workshop has to be what's in this cupboard. Oh yes. Now as a woodworker, I love working with hand tools and these used to be my granddad's. So it makes it even more special to know that what I'm using, he used like literally about 50 years ago. And my most favorite tool has to be this little router plane. I picked it up from a car boot sale a couple of years ago and it was in a horrible state. Took it home and it turned out to be a restoration project and it turned out really nicely and it's become one of my most used tools in the workshop. But fortunately, I don't have to rely on my hand tools all the time. I do use power tools and this has to be the heart of the workshop. It's my Evolution R255SMS Mitre Saw. Now this is a great all-rounded saw that I've used to make the greatest and best bike shed in the world and also recently the new wood shed. I've recently changed the blade over to a general wood blade and this helps more when I'm making finer furniture. Now woodworking has always been in my family, ever since my granddad working down the back of the garden in his workshop. He used to make Romany caravans and my nan always used to tell me stories when he used to come in taking snippets of the curtains to make curtains for the caravans. My brother's always had tools and when he moved to Australia, I moved out there for three months to live with him. He lived in the middle of the sticks, so there wasn't really much to do during the day. All I had on hand was woodworking magazines and tools and I put them to good use making lots of furniture for his house. Since buying this house, however, I've really been able to hone my skills in woodworking and I've been able to share my passion with you guys over on my YouTube channel. So you've seen my workshop and some of the tools that I use to make my projects. And now if you'd like to see me make a hardwood coffee table, click the link down below. And that's it from me. See you again soon. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find Will's coffee table guide, but you'll also find more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks for that, Will. It was brilliant seeing your workshop and I got some inspiration for it myself, actually. Being able to see that dust collection set up, it's spot on. I get dust everywhere and it's always a nightmare to clean up, so I think I need to make some improvements. I love seeing that you've got your granddad's old tools as well, being able to keep them there, give them a new lease of life, and just being able to have a glance every now and again and just get that inspiration, it's brilliant to see. And I absolutely love seeing the coffee table as well. I think people are gonna love it. So make sure that you check out his channel and also go and watch the guide to building the coffee table as well. The link's in the description whenever you're ready. Later in the show, I'll be revealing who has won a brand new Amazon Fire HD8 tablet and I'll tell you how to enter our big competition to win a Smeg Espresso coffee machine. Keep watching Evolution Power Tools TV for your chance to win. Now, we've all heard about van life, but have you ever seen how these amazing custom camper vans are kitted out? Let's have a look behind the scenes of these incredible creations. Adam from Camper Vans on the Frith is going to tell us all about his van customisation business. Let's check it out. My name's Adam, my business is Camper Vans on the Frith. We complete customer conversions and also customer camper van work, and we're based in Derbyshire in the High Peak. So I started my business in January 2021 after building myself a camper van the year before for my family to use. I've spent my life working in automotive and done quite a lot of joinery and carpentry in the past fitting kitchens and bathrooms in my own house and things like that. My last job was teaching 10 years in automotive studies, which I gave up this year to build camper vans and to work on camper vans for customers. We moved to Derbyshire because we love the Peak District and we're situated just on the edge of the National Park 
which is perfect for getting out in a camper van and exploring the local area. We had a motorhome for a number of years and after we sold that, I decided to build myself a camper van for the family and I enjoyed it so much. All the different aspects, putting together the electrical, the joinery, the mechanical side. And I was so happy with the camper van that I built for myself and got such good feedback. I thought I'll start my own business, which is what I did. So currently I'm sat in a camper van that we've called Horace. We named it Horace after my granddad who was a carpenter and joiner, which I think is quite fitting because of all the wood that's inside it. Horace is a medium wheelbase VW Crafter which sleeps two people uh, and it also has a child pull-out bed. There's lots of natural wood as you can see uh, and I used ev evolution tools to, to build Horace. So the process to building a camper van is a little bit like building a house but it's on a much smaller scale. You have to start off with a good base vehicle, put your wires in, much as you would in a house, decide where everything's going to go, insulate the van, and then decide where you're going to put the furniture and also the wood panelling or whatever you're going to clad the, the camper van in to make it feel homely. There's a lot of electrical work that goes into a camper van to make it purposeful so you can use it off-grid or on a campsite. Obviously cooking facilities need to go in and a bed is obviously the most important thing. The most rewarding part of building camper vans is when you've got the finished product and people go away in the camper van and the feedback you get and how happy people are to be spending time within your camper van. So we also carry out customer work as well, things like building furniture and we carry out electrical work. We've got a few projects in the pipeline which could lead to some full conversions for customers and also a bit more electrical work. To build our furniture in our camper vans, we use a lot of lightweight Garnier faced poplar plywood. This is brilliant to use, it's really strong and it's lightweight and using the Evolution tools to cut it, it gives a great finish. Evolution tools make working on camper vans really easy. The price point is perfect and they just seem to work well. So next for us, we're looking to do more conversions, more woodwork, more joinery, building furniture for customers and also electrical work. We'd also like to expand our Evolution tool range and maybe upgrade the table saw and upgrade my chop saw. The ability to just get in a camper van and just go and explore the UK is just amazing. It's just an amazing feeling to pack up your stuff, get in the van and just drive to wherever you want. Using Evolution tools to cut wood, you get the right cut every time. You get a nice smooth finish, you get a good mitered angle every time. So you've got an idea of what I do as a business now, and if you're interested in seeing my next project, please click through now. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video from Adam, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks to Adam there for introducing us to his fascinating business and it was great to see Horace too. I absolutely loved seeing how you took a hobby, something that you were passionate about, turned it into a career and you've got your own business on the go now. It's fantastic and I think it's going to be a huge inspiration to everybody watching at home. Lots of people have that ambition of turning a hobby into a business and you're doing it for all on us so it was great to see. Be sure to check out the Camper Vans on the Frith website to see more of Adam's upcoming projects. Also, make sure you click the link to Adam's more in-depth video in the description below. And if any of you are renovating your own camper vans using Evolution tools, please share it with us on all social media channels. We absolutely love to see them. Right, it's time to meet our guest maker. She provides easy home DIY renovation tutorials for beginners and intermediates, from decorating through to woodworking. 
She inspires people to become their own creative interior designer. It's YouTube's The Carpenter's Daughter, Vicky Lee. Thank you for joining us here today, Vicky, on Evolution Power Tools TV. You've seen some amazing success on your YouTube channel, but I have got to ask you, what inspired you to get started with it all? Why did you start the channel in the first place? Well, I think because I didn't know anything at all, really. Apart from my dad having a wood yard, didn't actually watch him at work, but I did see them flip houses a lot. And when me and my husband had been renting for a while, one thing they'd always told me was don't do up somebody else's house and rent is dead money. So I was looking for ages, found this, this property. It was the ugliest bungalow in a really nice area and it was cheap. And I was probably way too ambitious, but seeing my dad and my parents sweat over what they do, I taught myself on the absolute basics, filling walls, painting. So when it started to get really serious, like, oh, I need to learn how to do this, that and the other beyond basic things, that's when I thought, I'm gonna to have to look into YouTube videos. And because I spent hours and hours doing research, I thought, I'm gonna put this back into YouTube and maybe it'll help other people. So I like the idea of saving money and passing on my knowledge to help somebody else save money and just inspire them to, to find out they've got a project in them that they don't realise. I think you are very inspiring. It's the fact that I love your channel branding, being the carpenter's daughter, I'm guessing that you probably learned a lot from your dad as well, especially with the, the format of your channel. No, not really. I remember very, very, I've got early memories of me being a, a two or three year old. Sometimes my dad would bring home Christmas gifts uh, and it'd be tool kits for kids, but they were real metal with wood. And I remember trying to saw a piece of wood thinking, oh my God, this is hard. And I'd just give up after about a minute. Admittedly, Although I am called the carpenter's daughter because I am, it took a few years, maybe two or three years, to actually delve into any kind of woodworking where I'd go to my dad's wood yard and, and learn stuff. But right from the start, it was just basic renovations that wasn't anything to do with carpentry. I just think because I've seen my parents do things for themselves, it's more that that's what's inspired me to give things a go. Well, you certainly know that there's going to be a huge amount of people out there that will be searching for those how-to videos on how to lay a patio, which you've you've done in the past, and like the step that you did as well. That was one of, I think, your best performing videos out there. How do you come up with that inspiration for ideas? Have you got a formula, or is it just based on, um, I need this? The formula usually goes stress, <laughs> procrastinate, and then hours and hours of looking for other through other people's ideas. I don't want to copy people's ideas either, but what I'll do is I'll watch loads of videos to build my confidence. I'll have loads of questions in my head. If I do this, what could go wrong? And I'll put everything together and I'll start giving things a go. And sometimes I've even got a YouTube video in front of me just to follow somebody's methods. There's a lot of videos you think, oh, that looks fairly easy, but you don't know how it's going to go really until you actually physically do it and start building your confidence. Is that kind of the way you would recommend people get into giving things like this a go for themselves? It's very hard, I think, for people watching YouTube videos and TV shows where people just make things and it flies together with no issues. I know that you like to touch on when things do go wrong and, and ways that you get round it. Is there a top tip that you could give someone if, if you want to have a go at DIY or making something for yourself? Try this first. Yeah, I would say if you're nervous, start small and you might think this small project is really piddly and really silly but it all creates a compound effect if you do lots of little things and trying to improve and then you come to a bigger project and you've tried all these little things broken down before on other projects and then it just starts to go right so yeah start absolutely small even if it is just doing a basic filling in a screw hole that's come loose and just work your way up. That's amazing. And thank you so much, Vicky, for joining us here on Evolution Power Tools TV. It's been really inspirational hearing your story and hearing what you're getting up to in the future. If you haven't seen Vicky's stuff before, make sure you check her out on The Carpenter's Daughter. She's on all the social medias, them linked in the description below, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Etsy as well, I think. You're gonna to wanna to check her out. So make sure you check those links and go and see what she's up to. 
Now, if you're working on large sheets of plywood or OSB and want to achieve those long, accurate repeat cuts and have the portability not found on your table saw, then a track saw really is an essential piece of kit. But as with most tools, it requires a little bit of time to set up and optimise so it's spot on and fully tuned for the best results. Evolution's product design guru, Lee Price, is back with another intuitive guide, this time on the Evolution track saw. Hey, thanks a lot, Joe. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee from Evolution's product design team, and today we're going to look at track saws. So do you want to know how to get the most out of your track saw? From a complete assembly guide to all the fine tuning, we're going to get you covered so that your track saw is ready to perform with complete accuracy, whether you're making some simple plywood boxes or doing a full kitchen build. These days, you can use a track saw to easily make long and precise cuts, faster and better than any conventional circular saw and even table saws for a lot of circumstances. This here is light and portable. It's easily handheld. You might not need clamps for a lot of these kind of cuts you make, and you can set it up quickly and accurately. The big advantage is you can easily move this saw over your board and make your cuts. You simply place your workpiece down, position the track, and you can get cutting. You're ripping dead straight long cuts in a sheet of plywood very quickly in a comparatively small space with one of these. I'll guide you through the entire assembly process straight out of the box. I'll show you how to make the optimum use of your track, and I'll demonstrate some of the advantages of using one of these track saws over other methods of cutting. But first, here's some of the benefits of opting for a track saw when you're tackling your latest project build. This is not just another circular saw with some fancy straight edge, no. Now, once this track is set up on your workpiece, unlike a straight edge, that track won't let your saw veer off course. It keeps it dead straight. Plus, we have these adjustment knobs, which will adjust and fine tune the fit between your saw's base and the track. It takes up all the slop, you get a perfectly straight cut. The no slip friction strips on the back of your track sections, these mean for most applications, you can simply place the track down on the workpiece and you're ready to go, even if you're shortening doors. This is gonna save time if you don't need to set up a clamp every cut you make. Sure, clamps are provided, so you'll always have them with you if you need that extra support or pressure for clamping. Instance, you know, you might be cutting metal or some hardwoods. Anyway, in any case, you just align your track with the marks, you make your cut, the line will show you precisely where to go. There's no test cuts, no messing. Where that line goes, that's your cut. It's very easy. Plus, a track saw can make very big cuts in a small space. If you had to, you could slice up a whole 4x8 sheet of plywood in a relatively small room or garage. Unlike a table saw, you don't need space for the infeed and the outfeed. This is a real space saver in your workshop. This does most of what a table saw does, but moving between your job sites is a lot easier. Safer too. It's easier to transport and store this little guy. And if you're moving around, you're less likely to bash into the wall or hit the door casings. It saves your back. Plus, you can hold this stuff under one arm and get it in and out of a vehicle easily. This is a big advantage. Also, long miters are easily achievable. You can rip a 45 degree miter cut down a whole sheet of plywood. You can't do that on any miter saw. You basically make your line, you mark your edge, you line your track up. When it looks right, you make your cut. That's great. You can connect more pieces of track and go long distance. The ends of these track are nice and square, so you can buy more track sections and simply lock them all together for perfectly straight cuts. If you want to convert your garage into a gym, for instance, this is the ideal application for those kinds of flooring cuts. So, if you guys are interested in seeing the full assembly guide, saw calibration, and all those tips and tricks to get the most out of your track saw, click the link now to watch the full guide. If you want to ask any questions about your track saw after watching this video, you can also do that. Leave a comment, leave a remark, I'll be sure to get back to you. So that's it for me today. Now, over to Joe in the studio. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video from Lee, but you'll also find more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks for that, Lee. I'll tell you what, before I actually tried a track saw for myself, I didn't think there was gonna be much difference between that and a regular circular saw. But I'll tell you what, as soon as I laid that track on the cut line, made the cut and saw that it was perfect, I realized it really was a night and day difference. So I hope Lee's guide has been useful and stay tuned in future episodes for many more tool calibration guides and handy tips and tricks to save you some time or cash on those projects. Right, it's competition time now, so it's over to Megan to find out what you can win. Thanks, Joe. Hi, guys, and welcome to the part of the show where we give away some great prizes to you lucky people. I'm Megan, and I'm Head of Customer Service for Evolution Power Tools. Usually, it's my job to help you guys understand our products, but today, my job is to tell you which lucky person has won our picture competition and will be enjoying their brand new Amazon Fire HD8 tablet 
I'll also be telling you how you can win a Smeg espresso coffee machine with a recommended retail price of 31995 So stick around to find out more. Before we get on to the competitions, I just want to tell you a bit about some of the conversations I and my team have had with our customers this month. Dan has contacted us via the live chat on the Evolution Power Tools website to ask what is the difference between the R210 SMS and the R255 SMS. We directed him to the product specification page and Dan went on to make a purchase the very same day. We also had Clive contact us via email to report a damaged lever handle on his R210 CMS and we were able to collect, repair and return his item within four working days. We get a lot of positive feedback on our warranty process and how quick and easy it is to report a fault and get it collected, repaired and returned. William has contacted us by phone for help with setting up his R255 PTS. The customer service team sent him links to the video setup guides on both our website and on YouTube. On top of that, our technical team also called to help him through his build. If you need any information about Evolution Power Tools products or any support with your purchases, our customer service and technical support team are on hand 8am to 5pm Monday to Friday to answer any of your inquiries. Right, let's get on to the competitions. You guys have been sending in the pictures of the things you've been making and they all look great. Let's have a look at some of them. First up, we have this great picture from 1997 underscore carpentry. They have made this mallet from leftover handrail and have experimented with inlays and varnish. It looks great. Next, take a look at this brilliant gazebo from F1 Womble. I love all the detail that's gone into this build. Really great job. Have a look at this. Steve has built all of this using the R255 SMS double bevel miter saw. What an achievement. Well done, Steve. Spraying as a service has sent in this great picture of an Evolution chop saw being used. Thanks for this picture and I hope you get a lot of use out of your chop saw this year. Finally, Untroder has made this using the Evolution Fury. What a great picture and a brilliant finish. Thanks, Untroder. All of your pictures have been great, but only one of you has won the competition and bagged yourself an Amazon Fire HD8 tablet. Click the competition link in the description to find out who the winner is. If you want to take part in our picture competition, all you have to do is post a picture on Instagram of something that you have made recently. Make sure you use the hashtag or your picture may be missed. Next month, for our April 2022 episode, we will be giving away a one night stay for two as our picture competition prize. The one night stay collection offers the lucky recipient a choice of relaxing hotel breaks for two with breakfast included. There is a great choice of options all across the UK. Remember, if you're watching this after April 2022, the competition will be closed. Don't worry, you can still take part. Click the competition link in the description to see the latest prizes. You could be in for a chance of winning a Smeg Espresso coffee machine with a recommended retail price of 31995 All you have to do is answer the following very simple question. Earlier in the episode, we met Adam and his custom camper van business. The question is, what is the name of Adam's business? Is it A, Van Style, B, Camper Van Zendler Frith, or C, Chapel Campers? Click the competition link in the description to answer the question. We will then choose a winner at random from all of your entries and we'll announce who has won on the next episode. Remember that if you're watching this after April 2022, the competition will be no longer active, but you can still click the link to see the latest question and the latest prize. Before I go, I have even more Evolution products to give away. To win yourself an Evolution Miter Saw, just for liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel, click through to the competition page to find out what you need to do. Okay, that's it for competitions this month. Make sure you click the link in the descriptions to take part in the competitions and win some great prizes. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Megan. Right, that's it for our very first episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification so that you never miss an upcoming episode. 
Please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions, or ideas for content, and make sure you come back next time for more great inspirational stories. Thanks a lot for staying with me, and I hope you've enjoyed the show. That's it from me. Catch you again on the next one. Thank you.